In this section, we're going to learn about making a punching jig. So far, we should have our signatures, which are the different sections of paper that we folded together to make the inside pages of our book. And we should also have something to use for covers. So whether you made your covers um, using book board and book cloth, or you can be using some kind of found object for covers. If you look at this book, each one of these rows of thread is able to be sewn together because there are holes that were punched into the signatures. So we're going to figure out like where we want to place those sewing stations, as we call them, and also how many sewing stations we want to have. So to do this, you're just gonna need some strips of paper. It could either be just like a plain piece of paper like this, it could be graph paper, which might make things a little bit easier. And then I also have this piece of paper that's just like a little bit stiffer. Um, that will be helpful too in creating like a final jig. Um, but if you don't have a stiffer sheet of paper, you can just use like a second strip of like the same type of paper. Coptic binding is characterized by these beautiful exposed stitches at the spine. And because of that, oftentimes with Coptic bound books, you'll see that there are just many rows of stitching. I think like the stitching ends up going beyond the function and it becomes kind of like a decorative element. So for a really small book like this, this book is like three by six inches, we wouldn't necessarily need to have seven rows of thread to hold this together sufficiently. Three or four rows of thread would do it just for pure function. But because we end up with this exposed spine, I've added some extra ones just because I like how it looks. It just adds something a little bit more interesting to the book. The things that we really need to have here are one sewing station that is positioned really close to each end of the book. And those should be positioned about a half inch or less away from the ends, the head and the tail of the book. And then we'll need something else in the middle, like two that are someplace else placed in the middle in between the head and the tail sewing stations. There's a few ways that we can arrive at the pattern that we want our um, sewing stations to be in. And this is what these strips of paper are to help us with. So the first thing that you'll need is just one signature. I'm going to start with the graph paper and then I'll show you what to do if you just have plain paper too. The first thing that we're going to do is take our strip of paper and cut it to the height of our signature. And I'm just going to make a mark with my pencil and then just like fold it and tear it. But you can also just cut it with scissors. So now I have this strip of graph paper that is the height of my signature. And now we know that we want something that's close to each end of the book. So I'm just gonna place a mark with my pencil. I'm just gonna make a mark along one of the lines of the graph paper. So maybe one there and like one here. I could choose to put one right in the middle. And if you have trouble like visualizing the center, you can always just fold this paper in half. It's just an easy way to find the center. There could be one at the center. If I like those groupings of stitches, maybe I could put one like here and maybe do like a group of two. And that was about an inch away from my head and tail station. So maybe I'll do like groupings of two. So maybe I won't have one right in the center, but maybe I'll have two more that are like right around the center. Great, and so now I have, let's see, two, four, six, I have eight sewing stations. And so I just did this based on how I liked the spacing of those sewing stations visually. Now, I usually tend to go for like a symmetrical design, meaning that, you know, whatever's on this half of the book will mirror this half of the book, um, but you don't have to do it symmetrically. You can do an asymmetrical pattern. That would be totally cool. Just remember that you always need to have something close to each end. And so this was super simple with the graph paper, right? So let's see how to do it if you don't have graph paper, um, because sometimes, you know, we might just not have, have graph paper. So if you have a plain strip of paper, again, we're going to start just by cutting this to the height. So I've cut this to the height of my signature. I could do a similar thing where I'm just visually marking, but if you want it to be a little bit more measured, there's two things we could do. We could either take a ruler 
and lay a ruler along our strip of paper and use the increments on the ruler to make markings. So that's similar to the graph paper, but we could also just fold the paper and then each fold would um, indicate a sewing station. So um, I usually like to start by folding my paper in half, even if I don't want to use the center mark. And then with the paper still folded in half from the open end, I'm gonna just fold um, about a quarter to a half inch down. And so this is making folds that will end up being positioned at the um, two ends of my book like this. And then I have the center. So if I don't want to use the center, that's fine. Um, maybe I want to have um, two sewing stations that are kind of like in between the head and tail and the center. So then I can again like fold this in half and then I'm just going to fold the center fold to meet this fold. And now I have two more folds. So I could use these two as sewing station. I have it folded up again <laughs> this way. And now I'm gonna put another fold that's just, you know, close to that um, second fold that I made. And so now when I open this back out, I have a bunch of folds um, and I'm gonna decide which ones I wanna use and which ones I don't. The thing that the folding does is it makes all of these marks that are equal distance from one another in some ways. So right here I have a nice group of three. And then the same thing over here, I have a nice group of three. I don't think I'm gonna use the center for this design. So I'm just gonna put an X to remind myself that I don't wanna use that. And then I need to use the head and the tail. So here I'll have two groups of three and then I'll have my little head and tail sewing stations. So that's sort of how you can accomplish the same thing just with making folds in your paper. Now, if you have an object that you're using for your cover, kind of like something like this, where I have these bumps, I'm gonna want to use this to help me figure out the position of my sewing stations. Now this would also go for like, if you're using an object that already has holes in it, um, or I had another student who was using like a piece of an erector set that already had holes in it. So she um, made her punching jig based on the holes that were already in the plate from the erector set. So I'm gonna make another jig for my Lego base. I wanna start the same way by just um, cutting this strip of paper down and then I'm just gonna hold it over the cover and I'm gonna make a head mark and a tail mark so I have my two sewing stations that will be closed and what I'm trying to do here I'm working with these little bumps from the Lego pieces um, to make sure that my sewing stations are gonna be in between I don't want thread to have to be going over the top of this bump I want it to go in between the bumps so I'm just making a mark that corresponds with those spaces so maybe I'll do one there and there. And because these bumps are evenly spaced, I can kind of use those almost like the grid on the graph paper. So here I have like my head and tail, I have a center, and then I have two groups of two on either side of the center. So I've just used the bumps on my Lego plate to position those marks. So whichever method you use, you should end up with a strip of paper where you have made marks that will indicate where we're gonna punch holes in order to create these sewing stations that we'll be um, sewing a thread through later. So now I'm going to take my um, kind of like stiffer piece of paper. And again, if you don't have something that's like on the stiffer side, that's fine. Just choose a new piece of paper because especially if you have a piece of paper that's folded up, this is gonna be really hard to use as a guide because it's like, you know, like you made a little accordion fold in it. Um, so I like transferring these marks over to a new sheet of paper. And so what I do is I just lay the initial jig on top of the new piece of paper and I just put it pretty close to the edge. So I just see like a little bit of the edge of this red paper showing. And then I line up the one end flush with the end of my red paper. And then I'm just gonna take a pencil and transfer those marks over onto the red paper. And now I'm just gonna get rid of this 
and this will become the jig that I use. So now I have a red piece of paper with some pencil marks on it. I can use it just the way it is, but there's one more thing that we can do to make this even more precise. We can cut little channels, um, kind of like a tiny triangle shape around each one of these pencil markings. And this will create like a channel that our all the tool that we're gonna be using to make the holes will kind of be able to guide into that little channel. So I'm just gonna start at the top of the pencil mark that I made and I'm cutting at a slight angle, very close to that mark. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of the mark, starting at the same place. So I'm basically cutting out a little tiny triangle. And I'm just gonna do that at every mark. And we want to keep these cuts really narrow so you can see that I have these little triangular shaped cuts at each place where there was a pencil mark before. All right so now that we've made our jig we are ready to punch holes in our signatures. So now that it's time to punch holes in our signatures you'll need all of your signatures, an awl, so that's our tool for punching holes. I'm using this light duty awl. You can also use your heavy duty sewing needle or bookbinding needle for this as well. And then we'll need the jig that we just created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our signatures and I'm gonna make sure that the pages are nice um, and flush together. You know, we don't wanna have like one piece that's kind of like hanging off the end. And I'm going to place it down on the table. I'm going to take the jig. So notice how the red sheet of paper, I did not cut it to the height of my book. It's totally fine because the position of these notches that I cut is exactly the same as what it was on the initial jig that I made. When I look at this, I place this in to the fold of my signature. And when I look at this, I can see that all of my sewing stations, um, the notches that are going to help me create those sewing stations are evenly spaced in the space of my signature. And then I have this extra over here. And this actually ends up coming in handy to have this a little bit longer because this just ends up helping you move it around a little bit more like when you're taking it out and putting it into the next one. So I'm positioning this so that the edge with my notches or with my pencil marks is right into the fold of the book. And then so that the end of it is flush up against the end of my signature. And we wanna make sure that this is positioned as carefully as possible because we have six signatures to punch and we want this um, positioning to be as close to the same um, in each signature as possible. So I'm gonna put this here, I'm gonna hold it in place with my left hand and I'm gonna take my awl and I'm gonna guide the point into the notch that I created. And if you only have pencil marks, that's fine. Um, just make sure that your point is matched up with that pencil mark. I'm holding the awl at like a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna support this part of my signature with my left hand at this point and I'm sort of still holding my jig in place with some of my fingers of this hand and now with the fingers of my right hand as I hold the awl. So I'm gonna slightly close the signature and then I'm just gonna punch through with the awl and you can see how the awl has come right out of the um, point of the fold. And so that's what you want to see, that the awl is coming through at the point of the fold. Now we're going to do this all the way down the length of the signature. So if you noticed that your jig or you felt that your jig shifted a little bit, just reposition it. And so I'm just going to keep punching in that manner. So lining it up with my notch and I can feel that the point of the awl will go right into the notch. And then I'm just going to push gently so that it goes through. So I've punched all of my holes for my sewing stations in that one signature. Now I'm gonna place this just ahead of my work area and I'm going to move on to the next signature and do the same thing. And I'm just gonna continue doing this until I've punched holes in all of my signatures. And each time I finish a signature, I'm gonna place it 
in the same direction as my first one, just ahead of my work area. So I'm trying to keep these kind of in the same directional orientation so that at the end, all of my punched holes should line up really nicely. So you can just go ahead and continue with your other signatures until you have punched holes in all of them. Okay, and once I've finished punching holes in all of my signatures, if I jog them together, I should be able to hold these together and see that all of the punched holes are pretty much lined up with one another. Nothing is like wildly off. Um, if something does seem wildly off, it's possible that you may have just flipped one, you know? So the first thing I always check is just that I, you know, if I flipped it. So see how, even though I have a symmetrical design, when I flipped that one, these are very off now, like the, they don't match up. Um, so if I see something like that, the first thing I'm gonna try is just flipping it around. And now those match up much better. Um, if that is not the issue, maybe your jig just slipped and you didn't really notice, um, that's fine, it happens. Um, so what I would suggest in that case is either just like scrapping that signature and then just having less signatures, or you can, if you have more paper, just make another one and repunch it. All right, now we're ready to move on to punching holes in our covers.